All right, so the first step in the manual, we're gonna connect the upper portion to the base, and there are two screws on each side, four total, and they are M545s. So let's grab a little baggie with hardware. And here we can see every part is labeled, and these are what we're looking for. And they are the four long black bolts. So if we look at the base, you can see there's like a little cutout here on the side, and it's like that on both sides. And the gantry will sit here, then the bolts will go through the bottom. So I'm gonna grab a spool and set it underneath the printer to kind of hold it up so we can reach underneath. I'm not sure how well this angle is, guys, but I think you get the point here. So we're gonna grab the upper portion and with the lettering to the front, we're gonna set it over right into these grooves here. So, and it kind of sits there on its own. You do have to hold it somewhat as it is quite tall and unstable. But yeah, we're just gonna run the bolts down from the bottom into this channel here. But yeah, I'm just gonna run these down now. And also you can go off the edge of the table. That might make things a little easier also. So whatever way you gotta do it, just run these down, but don't tighten them yet as we do have to start the other side. Let's flip it around and do the same thing on this side. So don't tighten this side either. And the reason for that, what we wanna do is bring the X axis down to the bottom. And the reason for that is because we want the spacing here to be as close as possible where this is gonna spend most of its time. So you can just turn the coupler or you can use the belt up here to go faster and just turn that. And so we're going all the way down. And now we can tighten these bolts underneath. That'll kind of solidify the distance between the two channels and where they need to be. So yeah, this might be, you know, a little bit of a overkill on the detail, but you know, every little bit helps. If you get it all pretty close, you're gonna have really accurate motions in all the axes. We wanna snug this up reasonably well to the other side and tighten this up. And that's how you install the upper portion to the base. So for step two, we're gonna be installing the screen holder to the side of the printer. And we're gonna need three M420 bolts. And that's these guys right here. On the bracket on the back, you can see there's three holes and that's where these bolts will go through into the side of the channel on the right side if you're looking at it. And maybe you guys can see the holes there with the threads. I'm gonna start a bolt. And obviously with the slip going down, I'm gonna install it here on the side. So there is a magnet here on the holder so it kind of fights with you a little bit but it's not that big of a deal, I guess. Just tries to grab the wrench for me. But yeah, we're just gonna tighten up these three bolts and I'm gonna snug them up just a little bit. Don't go too tight, but yeah, simple as that. The holder is on. So let's flip this to the front. And now for step three, we're just gonna install the screen on the holder and plug it in. So the screen is pretty large. You can see it in my hand. And we have, looks like some kind of magnetizing section here. And then a wire that plugs in into it. And the other end goes into the printer. So yeah, the screen will literally sit here and it magnetizes. And we're gonna plug that right here on the front, just like that. So pretty simple. So for step four, there's quite a few things going on here. We're gonna install the spool holder on top, then also the filament detector onto the spool holder. And also there's a little wire holder bracket that we gotta install on the back, but we're gonna do that when we plug everything in. So we're at the very top and there's a little wire here that comes out. This is for the detector. And I'm not sure you guys can see, but inside the channel, there's a couple sliding nuts. Let's see if I can tilt this a little bit over. There you go. So we're gonna have to line that up with the spool holder like this. And the bolts we need are M418, two of them. And so you're gonna kinda have to eyeball it, but it shouldn't be too bad, as when you start one, you could still move it around and hit the other one. There we go, so yeah, not difficult at all. Now to be centered, you might wanna offset a bit, but if you do, then your wire's not gonna reach the detector probably, so yeah. Maybe we'll just kinda go to the side like this. And the spool holder part is actually on the wrong way. It needs to go the other way. And the reason for that is because the detector is on this side. And you guys can see how that's not very centered now at all. It's more to that side. So let's grab the detector. And there's a bolt in there. And this is what it looks like. I like how they put brass fittings at the end as it won't wear out. And this is where it plugs in. So this part swivels around. So all we gotta do is install this bracket here with this bolt onto the side of the spool holder. And if I turn it, you guys probably can see here, there's another brass threading there that the bracket will install into. So yeah, again, pretty straightforward here with the installations. And once we tighten it pretty snugly, this can all move around. So now we can plug it in just like that. And there we go. So this appears to be about right where it needs to be. And so I think we'll leave it right here.
All right, so for the next part, we're gonna be installing the support braces on the back. We're gonna have M48 bolts on the top and M420s on the bottom, also with a washer. And so these are the rods. Now they're pretty lightweight and each end has like this little eye bolt that our bolt will go through and also a nut and it is threaded and they're both the same on each side. So you will need to break the nut loose so we can adjust it. So we're just gonna untighten it and now we can spin this around and we're gonna do that on both sides. And so the way this mounts is there's a thread in here in the frame that this will go to and then the other side goes here on this little frame piece here outside of it like this. So, and this is the packet that has all of our hardware. Two smaller bolts and two larger ones and a couple washers. So the small one will go on top. I'm gonna go ahead and start it. And then our larger bolt and the washer to demonstrate here will go like this. The bolt first and then the washer and then this against the frame. So the washer's there to kind of fill in the gaps that are in the frame. So yeah, bolt, washer, and then into the frame. Now this part might get a little tricky because you might need to go a little bit shorter or longer, which you can't adjust it. And it might be smarter to do the bottom first than the top, but either way you gotta do it, that's how it all goes together. So mine actually was lined up pretty close, so I'm pretty happy there. And so what I'm gonna do now is tighten the two bolts. Now make sure when you do tighten this that your rod is not under stress, meaning like you don't want to pull one side down or something. Like it has to line up pretty much perfect. So if you have to, you know, adjust it where it's completely neutral and happy and then tighten it. And then after that, we can tighten these nuts to lock it all in. I'm going to tighten that one and then the bottom. And that's how these rods go on. So now I'm going to do the other side. And so for our last step, which is six, we're just gonna connect all of the wiring. So we're looking here from the back on this corner and there's a bunch of things that need to be plugged in here. So there's a couple wires coming down from the top. They are the filament detector and the LED light. And that's these two wires here. And then the large plug here plugs into the Z axis motor. So we'll plug that in. And then we'll plug in the filament detector, which is the black one and the LED, which is the red and black. So yeah. Pretty simple there. So we got a pretty large ribbon cable here coming from the bottom up. About midway, we got two wires which says X on them, a larger one and a smaller one. The larger one's gonna go to the motor, which is right here, and the smaller one's gonna go to the in-stop switch. So let's go ahead and plug those in. And in-stop switch is on this side here. So now we have the rest of the wire, and on the end of that, we have the plug that plugs into the hot end. This should go right here through this brace in the back of the channel. And this is where we're gonna install this wire bracket that goes right here. The way you do it is you just kind of pinch this, and you put the holder right through it like this. And without pinching the wire where it's loose, you can actually move it. So for some odd reason, I already had a bolt in there. I'm gonna remove that and use the one that came with the bracket. Yeah, and just like that, routes the wire very nicely. And then this part here goes to the front, and we're gonna plug it in right here, and there's a couple tabs that we gotta open up on the hot end, and then plug it in. And also there's a relief bracket here, which you can go ahead and go into first, or you can plug it and then go into it, but I think it would be easier to go ahead and plug it first, so let's plug it in, and then these clips will kind of bite around it. And now we can squeeze the flat wire into the relief bracket, and just like that. And so if we go to this side all the way, we can see we have enough cable here. And if you need a little more, you can pull on it. Or if you need less, you can push it back. So, so there is one more wire or cable that we need to plug in. It's going to be the other Z axis here on this other side. And that's it right there. So yeah, let's go ahead and pull this foam out of the build plate. And as simple as that, everything is plugged in and assembled. So for the next part, we need to check a few things and adjust them. And we're gonna start here with the build plate. So this might be easier to do it before you build it all, but essentially what we're doing here, I'm gonna raise this up just a little bit so we can see a little better, is we're checking the rollers underneath the bed. The way this printer runs is there's two channels here and there's three wheels on each side of the bed that run around it. And so there's three stationaries and three adjustables. And so what we need to do, Move that screen out of the way 
and lift this up maybe you guys will see a little better here but yeah we have one two three rollers and two of them on this side are adjustable and the center one is not and then the center one on the other side is adjustable and the two are not so it's a little tricky but not that bad because all we got to do is just go under there and spin the roller so if it's too loose that means it needs to be tight the back one is definitely loose the middle one is actually decent and the front one is also completely loose so let's go ahead and start with tightening the very back one and this is the wrench we use we're just going to turn that eccentric nut in there and so the amount you want it to be tight is where the roller has enough friction on it while you spin it in one spot like a little burnout so if it's too loose the bed will probably wobble and if it's too tight it'll wear out the roller so what you're looking for is just kind of like a slight drag so that's actually pretty decent let's check the middle one again so the middle one is good too now we're going to go to the front one here and it's too loose so let's tighten that just a little bit and that's a lot better now and it feels like they're all pretty good so and the bed moves around really smooth and it doesn't wobble so i think it's still a little bit too loose especially here on the back one i'm going to tighten it up just a little bit and so the way you want to tighten this side that has the two is where the middle one will also grab because if you tighten them too much both of them the middle one will just be loose since this one's not adjustable so that's the tricky part a little bit you kind of have to balance them between the two sides so i'm going to go to the other side we'll kind of roll these around and check and I definitely need to tighten the center one, but it's actually quite hard to get to because we have, surprisingly, one, two, three adjustable leveling knobs on just the one side. So I think what I need to do is see if I can just pull the whole knob off. So careful, there is a spring in there. You don't want to take the nut out completely, just the knob. And now we can get to our eccentric nut there. So yeah, it does require a little bit of extra work here to get these rollers right, but you definitely want to do this because if you don't, you're not going to be rolling perfect. So yeah, now we feel really good on all six rollers and we have no wobble and it's smooth traveling. So I'm going to put this knob back on and it's not hard to take it off at all. Just maybe a little tedious as spaces are a little tight in there. There we go. So we're good there. And we're done adjusting the bed. Now another thing that you might want to check is this belt. And we have a knob here up front where we can adjust the tension. So it's way too tight here. So I'm going to loosen mine a bit. And that'll, you know, relieve some pressure from this belt. Now because this bed is so large and the belt is long, you don't want to make this too loose. Don't over tighten it either. So if you start to hear like notes playing, that's way too tight. So, But yeah, this feels pretty good now. And I'm pretty happy with the Y axis. So let's go to our hot end next. And we can see here in the back, we got four rollers. They're actually adjusted pretty much perfect. So actually maybe not too perfect because this wheel here doesn't want to spin at all. It's kind of tight. So the ones on the bottom are adjustable and these are stationary. So yeah, this one feels good, but this one is a little tight. So we're going to loosen that a bit. Okay, that's too much, just a little bit. And there we go. So now all of our wheels are perfectly adjusted as they all have a nice tension to them when you roll them on one spot. So that's the key there. And we're going to check, make sure everything is smooth and it feels very smooth. So if you got any kind of funny stuff going on, make sure your wheels are not too tight. And also your belt is not too tight or misaligned. Now you can't really see the belt at all, but you do have an adjuster here. You can loosen and tighten the belt. Again, my belt was a little tight, so I'm going to loosen it just a bit. And be careful trying to tighten it without feeling it, because here you can't tell anything, but the belt could be getting pretty tight, so you don't want to over tighten it. Yeah, that feels really good. So we do have rollers here also on the Z plane on both sides and mine are actually perfectly fine. They all kind of spin, but if you do need to adjust yours, say they're binding or they're way too loose, the adjustments are here on these inside wheels and the outside two are just stationary. Now, don't worry too much if it's not perfect because the Z travels very slowly and also we do have dual Z screws. So, you know, everything is very well controlled up and down and sometimes you can't get all this perfect anyway. So if it's close, just leave it the way it is and you should be good and with that we are done putting the printer together and adjusting it all